Matt Frazier is the world famous psychic medium and star of the reality show Meet the Frasers. His recent book, When Heaven Calls, explores his life dealing with his exceptional ability to talk to the dead as well as the life lessons he's learned along the way. His journey has been remarkable and one of a kind. Matt, it's a pleasure to have you on If God Had a Podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. Yes, I'm so excited. So, uh, okay, let's just let's just get this started. So, <laughs> do you choose who comes through? Like, which spirits you talk to? Like, how does this whole process work for you? So it's crazy because for me, being a medium, when you lose a loved one or when someone passes passes on to the other side, the first thing that they try to do is reach people here in this world. They want to let their loved ones know that are still here on Earth. Listen, I'm okay. I'm on the other side. I am with you you know, and I'm still a part of your daily life. So they try to reach those people, you know, through signs, through dreams, through visitations, and sometimes even a medium like myself, because the other side knows who they can speak to and they know who they can communicate with. So it doesn't matter, no matter where I go, if there's a spirit that has a message or has to connect with their family member, they will. So it all depends right. on who passed, when they passed, you know, what they have to say and what the message is, which is pretty cool because I literally feel like I'm the post operator in heaven, you know, reconnecting as many people as I can with their loved ones on the other side. Yes. And we were kind of talking about this before we started. You've been so busy during this whole COVID thing. I bet you've brought so much comfort to a lot of people that really needed it. Yeah. And you know, what's so amazing is that I guess, COVID really taught me more about my gift and about my ability because, you know, I do uh, private readings all the time by Skype and, and Zoom like this, but, you know, we've never done live events online before. So during COVID, everyone's like, Matt, you know, I'm so upset. You were supposed to be coming to my city and the tour got canceled or, you know, your dates got moved and now I can't attend. So I wanted to do something special. I've seen everyone on TV going and, you know, doing the TV shows right from home. CBSN is one of them. You know, you see all of the people from home reporting. And I'm like, you know what? I wonder if we could do this with, you know, one of my live events or one of my live shows. And what's so crazy is that I didn't think it was going to work. I didn't know if it was going to be able to happen or not. Because, you know, I've never used my gift in this way. I never was yeah. able, you know, to have a time when I had, you know, you know, uh, a lot of people up on screen and reading people all at once. I'm like, you know, will I be able to read them? Will I get overwhelmed by the spirits? Will I be able to, you know, hear messages from them? So my team was like, listen, let's try it with one event and see how it goes. So we did one online event through Zoom, actually, just much like we're doing right now. And then all of a sudden, it was amazing because as every as everybody started to appear up on the screen, it's like, it looks like the, like, it looks like the Brady Bunch, by the way, when everybody's up right, on screen, yes. if you ever see the Brady Bunch, all of a sudden, all of these souls started to come through. And I would see, you know, a mom in this corner trying to connect with her daughter or a father in this corner trying to connect with, with his son. And it was amazing because soul after soul after soul after soul came through. And now I think we've, we've, I've read almost over 200 people, uh, through, through these online, uh, readings alone. And it's, it's, it's been incredible. That is amazing. And that's so crazy that it does work this way. Cause like you, I wouldn't know, like kind of like your, the questions that you had for yourself is like, does this work? Is it going to be, I'm, am I going to be overwhelmed? Like what's going to happen? They're all very valid questions. I wouldn't know what would happen, you know? So that's very cool. Well, being but, a medium, uh, it's, it's like a learn, it's like a language. Like I'm still yeah. learning about my gift and I'll never stop learning. You know, to the day I die, there's still, you know, ways or new ways that, you know, the other side is using to communicate with me and speaking to me. Just like us, you know, I, I'm sure that, you know, English is your first language as it is mine, but we're still learning, you know, new ways to phrase our sentences every day. We're, new, we're learning new words every day and what certain words mean. So, you know, for me, it's, it's the same thing with mediumship. I'm always learning new ways that the other side communicates. And, you know, I just learned this, this new thing about my gift as well, which is pretty cool. That is very, very cool. Okay, so why you? Like, how have you found that you're able to hear the spirits and, you know, the majority cannot? Like, what, what makes this gift so special? Well, you know, I don't know why the other side chose to talk to my family, to be right. honest with you, but I'm so glad they have because, you know, without this gift, I have no idea where I would be, to be honest right. with you. I just wish that, you know, the world was different back in the day because my grandmother had this ability, my yeah. mom has this ability, 
But back when they were growing up, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, they never used it professionally. They never talked mm -hmm. about being psychic or connecting with the other side. And it was actually so taboo that like people couldn't even talk about feeling or sensing their own loved ones. Like people thought you right. were crazy if you said that you sensed and felt your dad or your mom, or your sister, or your brother. So they kept it hidden for years and years and years and years. And then when I was growing up, I too had that ability. And, you know, I remember going to bed and literally seeing and hearing the departed. Right. But I don't think that our ability in the family is something that, you know, nobody has. I personally believe that we all have a way to connect with our loved ones and we all have our own phone line to connect with, you know, those we love and miss. But at the same time, we have to realize the ways that we're gifted. Like, for example, my grandmother was a medium. My mom is a medium and I'm a medium, but our gifts are completely different. You know, my grandmother used cards to read people. My mom, you know, would go and meditate and that's how she got her information. And for me, you know, I see the departed. Like when I'm connecting with you, like your grandfather's right behind you when I'm connecting. Oh my gosh. Like that's, that's how I see them. And he's saying happy birthday, by the way. So I don't know if it was just your birthday or whose birthday it was, but he's saying that to me. My birthday's in September, so I have a hot minute. I can't even think of anyone else's birthday that's coming up, but that's crazy. I never actually met my grandfather's, so. Oh my God, but yeah. but that was the one in the military here in this world, because when I'm connecting with him, he's got the military uniform on when I'm connecting with him. Yes, I think, I'll have to Is double check my mom. side of the family? On which side? Your dad's side of the family? I believe so. I think they were both in the military. Oh, perfect. Well, what I'm connecting, yeah. I felt like it was your dad's dad that's here. Okay. And you got to oh, know wow. that even if you don't meet your loved ones, they're still watching over you on the other side. And they're still with okay, you. Okay, I was wondering that. I was like, because I haven't met, mo like, most of my grandparents, you know, I met two of them. And, like, it was just, I was always wondering if they were able to still, like, look over me or, like, talk to me or, like, how that works. So, is th so that it works that way. Absolutely. And you know, what happens is like, even my own grandmother passed, you know, when I think I was just turning four when she had passed the psychic one, but you know, she still has watched over me my entire life. You know, even though wow. I only knew her for a few, for a few, you know, short moments or a few short years, you know, she's always been right here guiding me and watching over me. And it's the same thing with you and your loved ones as well. Like your dad's dad is really, really strong around you, you know, watching over you. You also have a dog that's here that passed as well. Um, that's also coming through because your grandfather's like, she's not going to know me, but she's going to know about the dog that had passed because this was like your baby here in this world. And then your oh. grandfather's also got, um, a child that's here. So there was also a child that passed within the family as well. Oh, maybe. Do you know um, if your mom had a miscarriage before you or if there was, um, a, a miscarriage? I don't think so. Okay, find out because that, I also saw okay. a baby that's on the other side. And anytime I see that, because even souls that um, don't make it here in the physical world. So that are right. terminated or that, you know, pass through a miscarriage or stillborn birth also are watching over the family on the other side. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh my gosh. Okay. So since you can see the spirits all around us, does that mean they're always just with us? They're just like always like, you know, while I'm walking through the streets of New York, they're they're there like absolutely absolutely wow. that's one of the one of the reasons why i don't like to visit new york because when i go there <laughs> not only am i seeing people you know pedestrians on the street but i'm also seeing dead people and what's right. really cool and what people don't really know is that when i'm on tv and you see me giving readings like in the audience or you see me giving readings to the tv host so i might only talk about one person i might talk about a person's mom that had passed or dad that had passed but literally there are you know probably 10 to 15 souls with each person just like with you, like when I'm here, I'm sensing and seeing all of these people that are watching over you in heaven and that I have and that have a connection to you. Right. But really, you know, uh, when I connect with with people, even though I might talk to one person, there's multiple souls that watch over us. That's crazy. How like in depth, like how in depth can you like see them? I guess like like my dog. <laughs> um, like I know dogs can't like communicate with us the same way, but like how like. I just think it's crazy that they're, that they're there too, you know, rather than just, just people. Oh yeah. And you know, what's so crazy is that I sense and feel them. And then also at the same time, you know, I hear them and see them. So like when I was right. texting with your grandfather, he's right behind you, very protective over you. And then right away he was telling me, you know, her dog's here, her dog's here. She's still upset over the dog. And then he was telling <laughs> me happy birthday and all of these different things. So I'll start to hear things that went on with them and, and people that they're with and, you know, important dates and report, important remembrances. 
And then what will happen is that a lot of times when I'm giving a reading, they'll help me to feel what they passed from. I'll feel what they went through in their body. And they'll talk about different messages that are there. And what's so amazing as well is that you don't realize it, but you met your grandfather, you know, even before you were born here in this world, because that's how our loved ones know us. So we actually, we all start in heaven, right? Yeah. And then we're born here in this world. And this is when we start our journey is when we're born here. And what's so incredible is that, you know, uh, like, like people say to me all the time, well, Matt, how do you know? Like a lot of times you'll see on, on TV, I'll, if, if a loved one comes through, they'll say like, oh, you know, you're going to have a girl in your future. Or I see you pregnant with a boy or whoever it is. They'll say, well, Matt, how do you know? Well, it's not that I know. It's that, you know, those souls actually wait to come down from heaven. You know, those souls are created in heaven and then born, born here. So where do wow. they wait? They wait with our loved ones. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I have always been so curious about the whole, um, like, Oh gosh, what is it called? Where you like have past lives with like reincarnation? Or... Yes, exactly. What are your thoughts on that? So, first of all, reincarnation is is very rare from okay. what I understand from the other side. And you gotta remember, first of all, that a lot of the information that I tell you, I have not read about, I've never was taught to be a medium. So a lot of people say, oh, Well, Matt, cool. a lot of the a lot of the information that you tell me or that I read in your book, you know, I haven't heard from mediums before. And that's because, you know, I haven't read other mediums books. I don't know what's in there, but I can tell you that all, everything that I share or that I choose to share are from my own experiences from speaking to the other side, because they're the ones who right. tell me these things. So cool. I can tell you that reincarnation is very rare. It's not something where everybody is, is reincarnated um, yeah. because they do watch over us. Now, after, after, you know, maybe a couple hundred years, would they reincarnate? Maybe, you know, but here on earth is where we find our soulmates. It's where we, you know, uh, choose our families. It's where we, you know, create our own families, where we have our friends, our, our, find our soulmates, so on and so forth. And then we, when we go to the other side, we're all rejoined with those people. But right. if, you're, if, if you made a lot of mistakes here in this world, if you weren't able to find your soulmate, if you just really had a terrible, terrible, terrible life, if you didn't learn any life lessons, if you, you know, were put here and never learned anything, then yes, sometimes you do reincarnate and you do have to, you do come back and you do it all over again. That's what the other side tells me. Wow. Okay. I could see that. Cause it's just like, you messed up. You got to do it again. You know what I mean? I don't know what you were doing. <laughs> so it's just like, I'll start over. Um, but you got to remember too, that sometimes what happens is, is that, you know, we don't realize, right? Like for example, when I, when I'm connected with somebody, I've never connected with anybody that was reincarnated, right? I can't because if they're reincarnated, they're going to be here. I can't talk to them if they're, if they're back living life again. So yeah. that's, that's never happened. I never talked to anybody that was reincarnated before. There have been times, there have been times where um, I haven't been able to reach somebody. So someone's looking to hear from a grandfather or a grandmother or a dad or a significant other. And for some reason, I can't get in touch with them. Now, this is very rare. It's only happened about two times during, you know, the 10 years that I've, I've been, a, that, that I've been doing this publicly as a medium. Hold on. I got, I got, this is, this is real life. This is what happens when you do podcasting in your house. Like the, the <laughs> landscape is running by. Oh, you're so good. You hear that, it's not the, it's not the spirit world. It's just the blowing leaves. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But anyways, it makes me wonder, is that soul reincarnated or, you know, uh, maybe that soul didn't make it to heaven. Maybe that soul did something else. I don't know. But that, that has been really uh, very rare. It has happened twice, like I said. Wow. Um, that is crazy. Okay. So has there ever, I guess, yeah, I, um, that was actually one of my other questions was, has there ever been a spirit that didn't want to come out or didn't have like a message or um, do they always have a message or is it just kind of like, I'm just sort of like, I'm here protecting or do they always have something they usually want to say? Well, so here's what it is, is that First, first of all, for souls to come through, you know, I always sense and feel them around. Like I was telling you some of the people that were around you, yes. but you know, for them to actually come through, they have to have a message that's there. There okay. has to be a message that, you know, uh, they have to deliver. Like your grandmother won't come through and just talk about her couch, you know, here in this world, or, you know, the way that she used to wrap gifts, you know, there had to be something that she didn't get to say here in this world. Maybe she passed before getting to say goodbye. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, uh, she passed all of a sudden. We didn't know what she died from. Maybe there was something that she wanted to tell her family but had never gotten to. Maybe there was something that she regretted that she wishes that she would have been able to make amends on and, and didn't. You know, these are the reasons why souls come through. Sometimes, right. though, 
souls choose not to come through. And that does have happen quite a bit where, you know, I might be talking to, you know, a mother who had lost her son and it's just too early. It's just too recent. The pain is just uh, too unbearable for that soul to come through to his mom. You know, that right. has happened once or twice. And the reason why is that your loved ones on the other side want to come through with the message that's going to help you to heal. Yeah. If they feel that by coming through with the message and, and delivering a message to you, is going to stop you from living your life or going to cause you to be more depressed or going to cause you to, you know, really be in pain or keep searching for them, then they'll wait till there's a time when, they're, when you're just a little bit more healed. Right. And okay. this, does, this does happen because, you know, there are, you got to remember, your loved ones in spirit, when they go to the other side, they can see tomorrow so much more clearly than we can see yesterday. So they know. Oh, wow. So they know by like, by me coming through, is this going to help my daughter? Is it not going to help my daughter? By me saying this, is this going to lead her on the right path or is this going to you know, derail, from, derail her from her path? So they already know this before, before the reading even takes place. So they only want to deliver messages that are meant to help you. Absolutely. Okay. And I, I was watching one of your videos and you were talking about signs, seeing 1111, seeing pennies, seeing butterflies, whatever it yes. may be. I feel, and I remember you saying um, about how, you know, we tend to see them when we are when we like need them most like when we're sad when we're going through something i know for what for myself at least like when i'm struggling with something that's the last time i will see any kind of sign because i am just like blinded by my you know right. problems and issues and stuff so how do we see the signs or how do you start to recognize them like i feel like i'm so oblivious <laughs> sometimes i'm just like so busy with things that i would never notice oh, you know, I'm, every time I check the clock, it's, you know, whatever time or like, how do you start to notice those signs and, and then kind of go to the next step of, oh, someone's trying to connect to me. So first of all, so I, what I want you to know is that signs come when you least expect them to, but when you most okay. need them. And okay. what the truth about signs is that you don't have to go searching for them. You know, you, what you're doing is right, is that you don't have to go searching and be like, oh my God, is it 11-11 on the clock? Or, oh my God, is that butterfly my, my grandmother? Oh my God, is that dragonfly being sent to me from someone on the other side? You know, the first thing that I want you to know is that, you know, when your loved one wants to come through, they will come through. And you know a sign is real when it keeps happening and happening and happening and happening and happening again. again. It's not just right. a random dragonfly that flies by you. It's that, you know, the moment you get out of, out of the car, there's a dragonfly that's there. The minute you're walking to a store, there's a dragonfly that's there. You walk into the store and there's a flag, you know, with a, with a dragonfly on it. You go to the jewelry counter, there's a, there's a dragonfly on a necklace. You know, right. they will use those type of repetitions. Spirit loves using repetition to kind of hit you over the head and say, hey, guess what? That's me. I'm sending you that sign. I'm there and I'm with you, you know, and, you know, I really want you to know that I'm with you during this time. And they don't always have a message. You know, the reason why they come through is because there's times when they want you to know that they're there and they're watching over you. Normally the signs come when you're going through a challenge or you're going through a struggle within life. Maybe you feel like you need some divine assistance. Maybe you feel like you're really stressed out and you feel like there's no, you know, um, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe you feel like, you know, uh, like for example, a lot of times you might get signs when you're going through a divorce or when there's a breakup that happens, or, you know, maybe you're, tr you're trying for, you know, a child and it just doesn't seem to be happening for you. And you're praying to your grandmother, you know, please, 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 you know, allow this pregnancy to happen. Allow me to, to have a child. And then that's when you start to see the signs starting to appear. So right. if you don't receive the signs, sometimes you just have to ask for them. You have to, you know, assign a task to your loved ones. Pick someone that you love on the other side, whether it be your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, and ask them, hey, I need help with this. I'm writing a book. I really need you, you know, to help me with this. I need you to help me to concentrate. I need you to help me get this book into the right hands of people. I need you to show me what to write about. Or maybe you're buying a house. You know, I need you to help find me that perfect house. Whatever it may be, you can ask your loved ones to help you in different ways. Because when you ask them for help, what you really do is you give them a little job and you show them a way that they can help you. And when they right. hear your message, that's when the signs start to happen. Okay. So you have, you basically have to initiate the messages or like the, the signs, right? Not always, but, it's, but okay. it definitely helps if you haven't been seeing them already. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So you're very young and have been a medium for technically, you know, your whole life. Um, and professionally for years, you know, five, 10 years, as you said. 
Um, what's your goal? Uh, because I feel like there's so many millennials and Gen Zs that have a lot of anxiety right now. They don't know the future. They are just like, they are the depressed and ang anxious generations, you know? So um, and I think we can totally relate, but how, what is your goal with, with kind of helping them? Well, you know, what's funny is that speaking of that, everybody comes to me because they want to know about their loved ones that have passed and they want to know right. what the, what the future is for them. But, you know, being a medium, I don't want to know my own future. I don't want to know what's in the books for me. You know, I want to enjoy the journey. I don't know what's, what's to come ahead. And every day it changes, you know, and I think that that's, that's what's, what's so amazing. I mean, I see things through a different, through a different lens and a different filter. And my advice to, you know, millennials and, you know, the different, the, the upcoming generations that we have is go with the flow, you know. Here's what it, I think that we've gotten ourselves into a mindset where we feel like we need to know where we're going to end up. And, we've, and when we are so focused on getting there, we miss all the steps in between. We, get, we miss, you know, enjoying the journey. We miss the road right. that we're on, you know? And I think that that's something, this is something that I want everyone to know. It's that your loved ones in heaven already know your future. People ask me all the time, Matt, is my mom worried about me? Is my dad worried about me? Are my loved ones in heaven worried about me? And the answer is no. And some people are like, well, how are they not worried about me? I'm going through a divorce. How are they not worried about me? You know, I just <laughs> right. had a major operation. How are they not worried about? And, and it goes on and on. And I'm like, listen, they're not worried about you because they see your future. Yes, you might be going through something right now. You might be going through an operation. You might be going through a divorce. You might have to sell your house. You may have lost your job. You might not know, you know, when work is going to come from you. But your loved ones aren't up in heaven biting their nails because they see the future. They see you coming out of this. They know where you're going to end up. They know where you're gonna where you're gonna be, and they know the greatness that you have inside of you. So if they're not worried, we shouldn't be worried. And I think that's the whole thing. I think that's the reason why people come to mediums, right? Is because you're so worried right now that sometimes you can't see the future for yourself. And you're worried because you're like, oh my God, you're so wrapped up in the moment of, you know, just losing your job, you know, just being independent and going off on your own and not being able to make the money that you thought you were going to make or, or right. be able to achieve the dreams that you're able to, to achieve. But I have news for everyone. And that is heaven tells me that we all have the same tools, the same resources and the same opportunities within life. We all have the power to manifest our dreams to you know, open up opportunities for ourselves. Manifesting is real. We can all do it. We just have to believe in ourselves and trust in ourselves. And when we're feeling down, and we're feeling depressed, and we're feeling you know upset, we just have to remember that heaven can see tomorrow so much more clearly than we see yesterday, and that you are not meant to fail. Absolutely, you must be such a comfort to like so many people. Um, and I feel like just from us talking, and then from certain videos I've seen of you as well. Um, I am like not as like afraid of death. <laughs> Does that make sense? Do people like tend to say that with you? Because like I feel like when I know that there's something beyond, you know what I mean, just like it being the end, like you would actually be able to like be there for your siblings or whoever it is. It's it's actually it's kind of comforting. <laughs> so what's you know? so crazy is that when when I first met my fiance Alexa, she was afraid of death, afraid of yes. like 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 petrified couldn't talk you couldn't talk about death in front of her like absolutely not couldn't couldn't speak about it you know and i was a former emt so i oh, wow yeah so she and she's afraid of anything medical like she has never gotten <laughs> blood work right her entire life she just did it for the first time last year and it was a big thing you know like crying and all this stuff because she's so afraid she does, she's like I, I you know they're going to do the blood work on her she's like am i gonna die am i gonna i'm like no you're gonna be fine like you're gonna be good you know so the thing is, is that when she, it's funny how life puts you together because when she first met me, here I am, I talk to the dead. I, I live death every day, you know, just in a different way because I talk to dead people. And, you know, I'm a former, former EMT. So when she first met me and, you know, she was like, well, I don't know, what is a, what does a psychic medium do? You know, what is a, what is a medium? And, you know, immediately I was like, oh, well, you know, your grandmother's right behind you and she's telling me this, 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 and this. And all of a sudden she literally on our first date ran out of the, ran out of the coffee shop and I didn't think she was coming back. You know, she was so oh my nervous. Gosh. Right. Luckily she did. But now, you know, I've seen such a change in her since we've been together because she's not afraid of death as she used to be. She's not afraid of, you know, what's going to happen on the other side. And what's so funny is that when we first met, she wouldn't come to my event. She was so nervous. She actually, she came to one of my events and after 10 minutes in, you know, she had to leave the room and go sit outside because she was so nervous. 
And now she's with me weekly on every single show. She doesn't get anxiety anymore. She doesn't get, you know, the nervousness anymore. She's able right. to sit through it. And she, you know, a lot of times what I love is, is, you know, after an event or after a show, she'll ask me questions like, oh, when that, when that son came through, what did he tell you heaven was like? Or what he, did he tell you about this? Or, you know, and she'll ask questions about the other side. And it's amazing because, you know, I feel like healing, ha you know, starts at home. You know, it started with Alexa and, and right. you know, us being together and, and her learning to heal through the afterlife. And I know that it's doing the same thing with every single person that comes to a live event or, you know, reads my book or, you know, somehow finds their way to me. Absolutely. Okay. So um, I would love to like continue a little bit more of my reading. If there's anything else that's going on or if there's any, I don't know, is there anything else that's happening? Well, first of all, I want you to know that your grandfather, for some reason, like you said, he's really, really connected to you. So, I am you know, so some, fascinated about this. I love that. Okay. Well, sometimes what happens is, is that souls will take on our, will take on certain jobs or certain, um, certain roles within our life. And, you know, he's one of the ones that, you know, has taken the role of watching over you, guiding you, looking after you. And he's telling me that, you know, the first thing that he loves about you is that you're so high energy. He tells me that you're constantly going, 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 going at full speed, a million miles an hour. And he says to me from when you were younger that you loved, like you always had creative ability. He says to me that you love to create things and organize things and that you always been like a writer. And he actually tells me that you will be writing in the future. That's something that you're really going to be um, working towards. And also at the same time, he's showing me visions of uh, you traveling, like, like I see you in the airplane and going to all different places. So travel is going to be really big for you. Have you already started doing that or planning on doing yes. that? Yes. Well, actually, so funny story. My book came out today. I wrote a book. It's um, 20 Things Every Motivated 20 Something Should Know. And it came out today. So I love that you said that. And I Online it came out today? What is it? I, it online. Yeah. It's oh, I on, love it's on that. Amazon. Yes. Thank you. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. It's everywhere. So I'm like just starting to like promote it and everything. So that's very cool. And then um, I love traveling like that. If I could have some sort of like traveling show of some sort where I could just like travel around the world or something. That's like, well, my you goal. will. You oh, will. yay. Okay. Because cool. he tells that's me that so you exciting. love learning about like, like people and cultures yes. and like you yes. feel very connected to people. And I got to tell you, you're very intuitive yourself. You might not realize that, but you're really intuitive and connected when it comes to people. Like when I'm connecting with you, they're also showing me that your intuition level is very high. That's the reason why you're so connected to pets. Like when you see yes. a dog on the streets, you know, somebody, somebody walking their dog, like you just want to go up and say hello and pet the dog because you feel that soul connection with the people that you're meeting, with animals, you know, with everybody around you. And that's one of the things that I see that's going to do really well for your career later oh, on yay. in the future. So your grandfather's saying, you know, keep going towards it, keep going towards it. You know, he always knew that from when you were younger and, and watching over you from the other side, he always knew that you were going to do great things. And, um, you know, the one thing that your grandfather is so proud of you is the way that you just accept people for who they are. You don't want yeah. to change people. You just want to learn about people. And yes. he loves that about you. Oh, I love that. That's so wonderful. And that's so true. <laughs> it's like so accurate. Um, because I just like, I think you should just accept people and like, you know, um, and appreciate the differences that we have. You know, like I was actually just doing another podcast interview right before I talked to you. And um, we were talking about, Black Lives Matter and like everything that's just going on in the world. And I was saying how I love that we have different views and I love how that we can talk about them and everything. So that's very cool. But I love that. Is there anything else that's going on or can I like try to talk to someone or is that like a well, thing? Yeah. I mean, there's also a young male that passed that's around you as well. That's also okay. stepping forward. Where was the young male that departed? Um, the only young male I can think of would be my mom's brother. He passed away when she was like very young. You know, I think that was the, that was the soul that I was picking up on earlier because I had this, the okay. soul that was here and they kept telling me, you know, um, I kept hearing this young boy that had passed. So he was just very yeah. young when he had departed. I think like 16 or so. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's here as well and he's watching over the family. And sometimes what happens is, is that you have a lot of family that you don't know um, mm -hmm. or that you didn't get to meet. But it's so funny because they know you and they're, they're connected to you. Who is it that you yeah. wanted to hear from? Um, my grandmother on my mom's side. Let me see. Did she just recently pass? Uh, no, it was 2006, I believe. Okay, hold on one second. And when I stop like this, what I'm doing is I'm just asking everybody to clear out and for her to step <laughs> forward. Yeah. Because 
Oh my God. Okay. So first of all, when I'm connecting with her, this was definitely a woman who had suffered here in this world because mm -hmm. when I'm connecting with her, she shows me that she had, you know, many different issues that she was going through. And right away, I keep feeling like I can't breathe when I'm connecting with her because she, right. cause I keep feeling this heaviness that's with inside of me. And the first thing that I have to let you know as well is that she is telling me that there were issues with, with um, her thoughts. She tells me that she was having issues um, remembering. She was having issues with her thought process here in this world. She right. says, and the first thing that, that she's bringing through, she goes, is I want my family to know, she goes, that everything that went, that went on with my, with my passing, with my thoughts, with my feelings, with my health, she says that I am now fine. And she's bringing that through. She actually tells me when I'm connecting with her that she sees that her jewelry was passed around because there's jewelry pieces that were kept in memory of her. And she's actually showing me a jewelry box that's coming up. So no, it's her way of just acknowledging that that jewelry box um, is something that she sees that was, that was passed down. So did you have that of hers? I have like a little jewelry bag of hers. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So no, yes. it's her way of just acknowledging that because these are things that you're supposed to have for when you get married, you know? She kept oh, telling yeah? me that <laughs> there were things for like your wedding day that she had in here that she wanted yeah. you to have. She says, and I want you to know that I'm still a part of you every single day. You know, she, her health was so bad because at the end, she's showing me that she was bedridden before her passing. And she tells me that at the end, she couldn't communicate. It was tough for her to talk because she's pointing to her throat when I'm connecting with her. She says, and I just want my, my family to know, she says that I heard everybody and she knew that everybody was coming through to, to come and see her because she shows me, you know, um, everyone coming in and talking to her and sitting with her. And she says to me that the last moments of her life were not sad for her. So even though the yeah. family had to watch her suffering or saw her being, being you know, um, struggling, she says that the one thing that she was so happy about was being able to say goodbye to everybody. Because mm -hmm. she says to me, some people were in person. She says, and she, she actually told me that some people were by phone or got to call her by phone. She says, but I want you to know that I am okay. And she says that she is at peace on the other side. I love that. And she is with, the, with that mom. child gonna... that had passed. She is with that, oh with um, your mom's brother. Yes. Oh, wow. I know um, I was talking to my mom before I told her that we had this interview and uh, she was saying how hard my grandmother took my brother's or her brother's passing when he passed. Um, it was just like, it destroyed her. So to know that they're together and, and happy makes me very happy. Makes oh, me emotional, but makes me happy. <laughs> so well, absolutely. I, I and you know, what's so crazy is that, you know, your, your grandmother actually is upset about what your mom had to go through as well, because it's like she lost mm -hmm. her mom and her brother at the same time, because when her brother had passed, you know, her mom was in such depression and, and such a, just such a hard state after mm -hmm. losing that child. So, you know, she also wants to let your mom know that she's so proud of how independent she was and about how, you know, how many milestones she achieved within her life without having her mom there? Because her, her mom keeps saying, you know, I wish I was more supportive. I wish I could have got, got to be more supportive or been there more. But yeah. it was really that she was grieving the, you know, the loss of, of, her, bro of you know, her brother. Yes. Or her son. Wow. It would have been her son, your mom's brother. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's insane. Um Wow. <laughs> I, um, I love that. I, I wish I, I, I wonder, so I also, I've interviewed a lot of um, celebrities that have passed and do they watch over you or is it mostly just like your family as well? No, it's more so your family. It's the people okay. who you were connected to within life. So yes. the people who you were connected to that you had a divine connection with, those are the people that watch, that, that watch over you or the people okay. that you've helped. Now there have been times when I've connected with, you know, doctors or nurses and, and they had long-term patients that they took care of and got to know when those patients have come through. But normally wow. I haven't had anyone that came through like on like a, like a, someone that you interviewed on a podcast, yes. you know, it'd have to be <laughs> no, somebody totally. that you made a, a difference in their life, you know, either medically or physically, you know, something like that. Okay. Well, it was, they were, when I was younger and it was, um, they were like on location and they, like, we had very, we had very like in-depth connections and, um, and we would spend a lot of time together. Like that day, like, it was like only a day that we would spend together. So I didn't, they made an impact on my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Probably I didn't make that big of an impact on their life, but I love that. And thank you so much, Matt, for coming on. If God had a podcast, I would love for people to know more about where they can get your book, um, When Heaven Calls. 
So where can people find that? Where can people, you know, if they want to get a reading done by you, where can they get those done? So um, the best place to find my book is on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. I personally love Amazon because they'll, they'll ship it to you next day. Um, it's yes. called When Heaven Calls, Life Lessons from America's Top Psychic Medium. And also, you don't have to be dead to find me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. And also, if you'd like to attend a live group online reading with me, just for COVID-19, we're doing a special $19 event. You can attend for just $19. And uh, you can get tickets at meetmattfraser.com. But you got to be quick because they sell it really quick. Meetmattfraser.com. In case you want you know, to do a group reading, I think that's amazing. Thank you so much for coming on If God Had a Podcast. I had a lot of fun and I really appreciate you doing a reading for me as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on and thank you for the inspiration that you continue to bring the world.